In the early 21st century, as the world became more interconnected, so too did the threats lurking in cyberspace. In 2004, two of the most devastating computer worms in history, Netsky and Sasser, were unleashed, wreaking havoc across the globe. Their creator, a quiet, unassuming teenager from a small town in Germany. This is the story of Netsky and Sasser, the viruses that changed the world, and the mastermind behind them. As far as what it does to a system, the actual SAS or worm, is right now just using systems to spread itself. And it's causing a lot of network traffic and it's taking down other services just because of the nature of the way it spreads. So that's the damage it's causing. Svenja Shan was born on April 29, 1986, in the quiet village of Waffensen in Germany. Behind the screen of his computer, he was anything but ordinary. By his mid-teens, he had developed an expertise that far surpassed that of his peers delving into the world of hacking and malware. For Yashan, computers offered a refuge from the outside world, a place where he could exert control and explore his limitless possibilities of the digital world. Little did anyone know that this quiet teenager from a small German town would soon become the author of the two most notorious computer worms in history, Netsky and Sasser. February 16, 2004. Netsky emerges from the depths of cyberspace, a new kind of worm that would soon wreak havoc across the globe. Unlike previous viruses, Netsky was not a singular entity, but a family of worms, each variant more virulent and destructive than the last. Netsky spread primarily through email attachments, exploiting the most vulnerable part of any system, the user. Disguised as harmless files, these attachments would entice recipients to open them, triggering the worm to embed itself into the systems. Once infected, the worm would scan the computer for email addresses, sending itself to every contact it could find, thus continuing its relentless spread. But Netsky was more than just a tool of destruction. It was a statement. Embedded within its code were taunts directed at other virus authors, particularly those behind the bagel, and my doom worms. This led to what became known as a virus war, with Yashan releasing new variants of Netsky in rapid succession, each more sophisticated and aggressive than the last. By June of 2004, there were approximately 29 variants of Netsky, each more damaging than the last. The most notorious of these was Netsky-P, which became the most prevalent email-borne virus worldwide. Its impact was staggering infecting millions of computers and causing billions of dollars in damage. Any virus companies raced to develop solutions, but Netsky's ability to evolve made a moving target, one that was increasingly difficult to hit. But as the world struggled to contain the damage, a new threat was already on the horizon, one that would take the chaos to an entirely new level. April 30th, 2004. Just as the dust from Netsky was beginning to settle, the Sasser worm was unleashed upon the world. Unlike Netsky, Sasser was not dependent on user interaction to spread. It was an autonomous worm, designed to exploit a specific vulnerability in Microsoft Windows systems called LSASS. Sasser was a silent predator, scanning the internet for vulnerable IP addresses and exploiting the LSASS vulnerability. Once it found a target, the worm would infect the system, causing it to crash and reboot repeatedly in an endless loop. The result was widespread disruption on a scale that had never been seen before. Sasser would cause CPU usage to spike constantly and slow down. Then, it would find and infect any other computers on the same network via FTP server. The impact of Sasser was quickly apparent. The news agency, Agence France Press, experienced a blockage in its satellite communications for several hours, and the US airline, Delta Airlines, had to cancel multiple transatlantic flights because its computer systems were overwhelmed by the worm. This led to flight delays, compromised emergency services, and disruptions in financial systems worldwide. Microsoft released a patch for the LSASS vulnerability on April 13, 2004, a few weeks before Sasser's release. 
but unfortunately, many systems remained unpatched, leaving them vulnerable to the worm's relentless assault. As the world reeled from the impact of Sasser, a startling discovery was made. A discovery that would lead investigators to the source of both Nesky and Sasser. As investigators delved into the origins of Sasser, they began to notice something unusual. The code used in Sasser bore a striking resemblance to that of Netsky. The functions were identical, the structure was similar, and the methods of infection mirrored each other in ways that were too precise to be a mere coincidence. The author of Netsky.ac, one of the later variants of Netsky, claimed responsibility for Sasser within the code itself, confirming what investigators had suspected all along that Netsky and Sasser were the work of a single individual. Having grown tired of the viruses that were being released, Microsoft had created the Antivirus Reward Program, a program that pulled together $5 million in bounty payouts to be paid to those who would give up information regarding virus creators. According to the attorney that mediated talks between Microsoft and German authorities, someone approached Microsoft and said, quote, I have information for you. I know about your reward program, and I want to talk to you about somebody who has done something that is malicious in nature." End quote. A few days later, on May 7, 2004, a man had been arrested in the small village of Waffensen, Germany, after being suspected of releasing the viruses. His identity would be revealed to be Sven Yashan. The arrest of Sven Yashan marked a turning point in the fight against cybercrime. For years, the perpetrators of these attacks had operated with impunity, hidden behind the anonymity of the internet. Yashan was tried as a minor, given that he was only 18 years old at the time of his arrest. In court, he admitted to creating both Netsky and Sasser, expressing regret for the damage he had caused. But despite his remorse, the consequences of his actions were severe. The judge sentenced Yashan to a 21-month suspended sentence for computer sabotage and illegally altering data. After his conviction, Yashan largely disappeared from public view. Reports surfaced that he was offered a job by a German security software company who recognized his talents and sought to put it to better use. The legacy of Sven Yashan isn't just in the lines of malicious code, but in the very fabric of how we understand the digital age. At just 17, Yishan had unleashed Netsky and Sasser, two of the most notorious worms in history, each a testament to the fine line between brilliance and devastation. Netsky, with its countless variants, became a relentless force, targeting vulnerabilities not in systems, but in people. Users who unwittingly became the vehicle for its global spread, having failed to realize that behind the unassuming text file lay a hidden .exe extension that had been hidden. Sasser, on the other hand, took a more direct route crashing systems, halting businesses, and proving that the power to cripple the world's infrastructure could rest in the hands of a single teenager. The world has only become more connected, and the threats have evolved. Ransomware, state-sponsored attacks, and data breaches that make headlines today. Yet, Yishan's story serves as a stark reminder. Behind every line of code, every click of a mouse, lies the potential to shape the world for better or for worse. <laughs>